This is the April 19th, 73-63 roll on the projector. I managed to project it without jumping much, but I have to hold my finger here and press against the top loop. This is the last page of the journal. Start a new journal today. The sun is shining and I'm going to load the camera with 100 feet of 73.63. The bread is drying and warming up a little. I'm corn sourdough bread. Soup is in the pot. Okay, this is going to be black eyed pea vegetable chili. It's not lunch time yet. So down the cellar we go. The D94 was saved that I used yesterday. That's the universal tank. I still have to clean up and put it away. That's for 25 feet of film. And 750 milliliters was enough. So I added some rinse water to it to tippy top it. The idea is how long can I keep this D94 in the bottle in an airtight filled up condition before it turns brown? Really don't even care to use it again. It would be alright for, you know, a test or two. The D94 that I had mixed previously was in a little bottle, one like that, a 250 milliliter from leftover LQR. It was about half full and in two days the D94 turned amber it wasn't clear anymore the d95 doesn't do that but this bottle's almost full anyway but i didn't tippy top it off there is an air space so it's right up to the top right there this is the one that goes bad and you have to keep full the upb one a tank was filled with water and measured and i took notes so one liter just barely covers the spirals so a liter and a half is a good idea to use The Lomo Pro tank was measured. I held the Sharpie here and drew a line around it. Then took this out and put water in. And it was about two and a half liters. Two liters might do it, you know, with this being filled with film, but two and a half liters would be better. So you have three quarters, one and a half, and two and a half for the different size or less if you want to be stingy and try to stretch it. This video is being made because I'm transitioning to shooting and developing 100 foot rolls of film. I have quite a few 100 foot rolls of regular 8 film. So I'm starting with the oldest and the worst the old 7363, I think it's the film that I had re-perforated by Edward Knoll in England. And I've shot some of it, I've sent it away and had it develop and it turned out alright. The roll that I shot yesterday on 25 feet that was left over, that was jumping in the projector. I don't know if I slid it bad or what, so we'll find out. The idea is to use the H8 Rex. I don't want to spool off 25 foot rolls and test them in the B8. I want to practice shooting with the best lenses I have, the most film, at 24 frames a second, and develop the entire 100 foot roll. So all I'm going to shoot are 100 foot rolls of film, notwithstanding one roll of UN54 that's left over and a 25 foot size, but I'm not doing that one yet. I'm going to need some milk jugs to hold the developer. I'm going to need a lot of D94 and D95. I will also need replenisher. And I may not have enough chemicals right now to do it all. I'll have to order more. But that's the idea. If I'm ever going to teach a film class and let students use film and film cameras and practice like I'm practicing, I'm going to have to know how to develop their films until they learn how to develop them so we could see the results quickly. Now I need to practice, I need to develop the film, and I need to see the results quickly. And that's why I'm doing it. 
but I'm using D9495 so I could do it quickly. I don't want to wait an hour and three quarter minutes to develop the film just because it's more economical. I have HC110, D76, Dectol, all sorts of things, and I don't want to use them. I even have R09 and LQR, but I'm going to use D9495 because I can get away with just a couple minutes or even one minute. But the 7363 takes five and a half minutes, and that worked. I'm going to do that again. I'm going to try that in the big tank, use up all my chemicals before I order some more. This is the inside of the H8 Rex 4. You push this and it will pop the spools out. This closes the loop formers. When you put the lid on, it hits this button and it opens them automatically. You don't have to do it manually. The H16T requires you to push it up manually. It doesn't have a pop-up. And it doesn't have this. However, this camera does not have a guide right here to hold the film. So what you have to do is put the film in there manually. I saw a video about how to do that why these are removed and then loaded manually. To load the camera without a guide, I think all you do is pull this back and put the film in there. It doesn't pull up, doesn't lock open, it springs shut. Sprockets are only on the bottom. It worked. That's all you do. I do trim the end first on that cutter. I use the cutter. So it's laid in there. Holds tight and goes right through. The same crank that I use on the H16 works in this camera, the H8 Rex 4. That's the sound, and the top wheel should be turning. That's how you backwind. The other one is on the left, and it's much smaller. The Rex 4 is on the right, and the H8 is on the left. It's a smaller pin. The larger one won't work in it. So the smaller crank is for the H8. The larger crank is for the H8 Rex 4 or the H16 cameras. The posts in the H8 Rex 4 are thin with a little bump on the bottom. They are made for Bolex reels spools that has that configuration. It goes over the so Bolex film from Bolex would have that kind of a spool. And you would have to line it up and get that little button in that hole right there. Film comes with these Flanges for American cameras, three and four, like on a Bell and Hal. Now they'll work. 
you just press it down. It doesn't fall into place no matter where you put it. So you just press it. That works. FedEx film comes with this kind of a center. It's bigger. And it rattles. It's probably all right the way it is. It does have to engage in order to take up the film. If you use this kind as a take-up spool. Over here. So it does engage. But it's not tight. The solution is to get these adapters made. Shamrus Cine in Georgia made me some. Alright, here's the thing. That should be flat. This little rubber eye cup was very difficult to get on, but I sat in the direct sunlight with this closed and the lens covered, and I did get it on. Now I have to set the diopter, I guess to my naked eye. I'll try it that way, but that'll be the thing to do. I'll have to get a tripod, and uh, I'm going to look for a hand grip for it before I get started. The diopter for your eye is set by removing a taking lens from the front, this one. Take it out, open the gate, loosen this knurled ring. And then look through the eyepiece at a bright light and move this in and out until the ground glass is sharp then tighten the ring and you're done. Do not unscrew this. Everybody screws this in tight and they break it then they have to send it away. Do not tighten or loosen this screw. Only this knurled ring. This is in a slot. The screw is in a slot that makes the eyepiece move in and out. The knurled ring tightens against it. That's how you focus for your eye or your eyeglasses. Close this, put the lens back in place, you're ready to go. One has been loaded. There's the tape from the box. Two more to go.